Welcome along guys, welcome back to the garage, welcome back to the Ducati project. Now this is quite a long episode because it's all to do with stripping, prepping and painting an engine. I've been, I've spent the last three days solid at it. <laughs> stripping an engine, polishing an engine, prepping an engine, painting an engine I mean. So without further ado, let's fire up the intro. <laughs> Don't, don't play with fire kids. Turn that off, Chops. You've got a said example here. So there's the engine. I've basically just had a bit of a clean up in here to try and get all the real chain luby grimy bits off. Um, you can see the paint is, <laughs> is non-existent over all the back of the engine. Now my plan for cleaning this up, I've actually looked into a few different things. I've looked into CO2 blasting. Someone mentioned where that's using like a dry ice to actually blast the engine. A few people have said, you know, just take it for bead blasting. You can't do that when a whole engine's assembled because that blast media will end up getting through things like this and getting into the engine and once you've got any grit in the engine it will just destroy itself when you start it so you can't do blast me you can't do uh you know aqua blasting because obviously that's still bits of media and it's water not when the engine's assembled like this you can't do bead blasting but co2 blasting is like uh, as i say it's bits of ice blasted at the engine so of course they just melt and rebound off the off the off the bike if they do get in it's just a little bit of water which will just evaporate or whatever so that was an option but it's very expensive very specialized you can rent machines but it's it's not practical so what am i going to do so I am going to try just with my trusty drill and some wire brushes in the drill and see what we do. Now, got to be a little bit careful, you know, this doesn't damage the aluminium because obviously I'm going to prime and paint this. So let's have a little test down here where the, uh, where the sprocket cover is going to hide things. So there we are. It's not bad actually. I mean, if there's any areas which are really scratched, I can run it over with some fine sandpaper to get them out. But, you know what, I think that's okay. It's certainly getting rid of the paint. It's certainly getting rid of the corrosion. And this is exactly what I did to the Fireblade. When I had the Fireblade project where I swapped the 1000cc engine into the 900 chassis, I did exactly the same thing. Wire, brush, inner drill. I cleaned up all of the aluminium like that and I didn't have a problem. Let's do it. So first pass of the drill on the back of the engine. There's a few little marks where it's cut in a little bit, but I can just sand those down afterwards. That's got rid of most of the, uh, keyed it up, of course, got rid of most of the paint. I'm gonna go over a little bit more, that's not finished. downscaling now to the Dremel. The Dremel and little wheels like that. I think that's gonna get in those nooks and crannies. There's hope yet. Some bits I'm just not gonna get to. I'm just gonna have to scrape off. That, that wore that out quite fast. <laughs> oh dear. I've just got my airline out and blowing everything off, saying that, so flake of paint there. Probably gonna have to do a bit more around here, get my little Dremel in these little nooks and crannies, but I'm a little bit happier now. I wasn't particularly happy with how this was going earlier on. I think it's just gonna take a lot of time to get this where I want it to be. And then of course I've got to do more of the underside as well, so I'm gonna have to tip the engine up to get to the underneath. 
So there we go guys, that is I think the finished prep work now. I've just washed the whole engine down with degreaser and water, um, gently of course. I think that's as good as I'm going to get it, to be perfectly honest. As I say, this casing is coming off anyway, so ignore these casings. I'm talking more about the metal work. Where the paint was flaking, I've removed it. I mean, around this area, it's really hard to get in here. Very, very difficult. Um, I've got in there as best as I can. Hopefully keyed areas up as best I can. It's now clean. Yeah, it's it's tough. All these little niggles, all these little areas here. It's really hard to get in to try and clean them up. I think I've done as good as I can. I think I've got it as good as I possibly can. I think now we are ready for a bit of primer. Morning guys. Well I've gone away, I've had a sleep and I've decided this just ain't good enough. <laughs> More work required. Oh. I've spent another hour, hour and a half going over it again with wire wall, sanding pads. It's as good as it's going to ever be now. I've just washed it all down with uh, brake cleaner, degreased the engine, and now I'm gonna start masking things up, getting ready for that first coat of primer. It's a very complex shape, a very complex looking engine. It's not like, the, not like the blade I did, which is just a straight four. That was like sanding out almost like a box. You know, it's a very simple shape. This is complex, overhangs, you know, you've got fins for the oil cooling. So much more complex shape. It's taken me much longer to prep this engine for paint. Ideally, if budget would allow and my skill level would allow, I would just strip the whole engine down and sent the casings off separately to maybe be Cerakoted or something like that. But that's beyond my skill level to reassemble this. I could probably take it apart, <laughs> but I'd never get it back together again. So it's not happening. This, this, is a, this is a clean up as best you can. Otherwise you're talking, this budget, this bike, I could have probably bought a new Fireblade, a new uh, SP, Hypermotar, you know, the way this is going if you go crazy like that. This is a clean up, a practical clean up that anyone I would say can tackle. You don't need any specialist tools, specialist knowledge. That's the idea of this project. Keep it simple. Oh, Ooh, some valves. No guns in there, that's good news. As part of this job, obviously I'm gonna check valve clearances and stuff when things go back together. Once I painted it, I'll change the belts, I'll check the valve clearances. It's time to mask up the belt covers. There we go, ready for refitting. Well there she is guys, the final finish clean sanded masked off things like that and then the cable coming out I think we've got a pretty good finish on this now. This has been about six hours work, six, seven hours work, perhaps, to try and prep this. It's been a lot of effort. Let's do it. First coat on, now we've got to leave it for 10 minutes. I 
welcome back guys well it's the next day after the primer went on it's had 10 hours to go off properly uh, results are pretty good there's a couple of little areas where it could have been better but you know you, it's easy to get very very carried away with this sort of thing <laughs> and when it is in the bike I'm sure it's going to look fantastic some things where it could be slightly better I should have done a better job getting the old paint off there you can see it's, you can just see the old paint underneath there the head here is, is a little bit rougher around this but obviously new spark plugs going in here but you can see there's a little bit but I mean it's like come on you, you know, it's, it's, it's just realistic here. <laughs> I'm not looking to be able to show this bike in competitions. You know, this bike is still going to be very much used on the streets, gravelly lanes, thrashing around. I mean, that, that's where we are. It's, it's, I'm pretty happy with the results, and that's just with the primer. Once the silver goes on, I think we're going. To, I'm going to be over the moon. That's the first coat. Looks pretty nice. Happy with that. Coat number two. One more to go. That is it finished, well finished, <laughs> barely started. But that, that's the finish on the engine. I've put the, I've, take, I've unmasked the belt covers. I've put a few little things back on the engine like the, uh, the overflow uh, crankcase breather. But I'm pretty happy with the finish, to be fair. I mean, there's the odd little area where it's not absolutely fantastic, but you know what? For a usable bike, a road bike, not a show bike, I think, I think what I've achieved fits the bill. These come off as well, so I'll probably send those off. Well, I'll definitely send those off to be coated in something. So maybe these on red, maybe these red at the top will look quite nice. Obviously, same with the front cylinder, these pieces. This one, I'm not sure what I can do because it's got rubber mounts attached to it. So I don't know how that would work with the rubber. So I'm not sure what to do with that top one. Again, this whole casing would come off is going off to be Cerakoted. New Oberon Slave going on, probably red again. But, you know, I think what we've got here is a decent, I'm happy with the finish. Perhaps I should have gone darker. I didn't go darker for one reason. The only reason I didn't go darker because this cylinder is right by the front wheel and it gets blasted with grit, blasted with stones from the front wheel. And if I'd gone darker, every chip on it would have shown through the, the silver underneath. So if it had been black, it, it would have got pebble dashed and then it would have looked really nasty with lots of little silver stone chips on it. So I went silver because it will sort of match the, the underneath when it gets chipped and it won't show as much. So that was one of the reasons for going silver. The main reason, really. Next episode, we're going to start cleaning up all the bits I've taken off. I've got myself an ultrasonic cleaner now, so I'll give you a demo now we start bolting things back together oh yeah i love it